All right, so today I am flying with Josh. Uh, we've flown a couple times together. He uh, got your private, and then he took a little time off, and now we're getting back fired up in uh, getting that in instrument rating. Today we're going to go out and shoot a few approaches, and he's going to show you guys how it's done. It's no pressure, huh? <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Oh, shoot an RNAV, maybe spin around, shoot an ILS, see, just so you get one of each. Um, this plane does not have WAS, so we can't, the only precision approach we can do in this plane is the ILS. Um, so while we're on the ground, uh, my method for, for configuring the plane is we can do whatever up to about a mile or two before the final approach fix. Then I like to get her configured so that by the time we get to the final approach fix, we're at 90 knots. Not, sorry, 90 knots, first notch of flaps, full prop, full ridge, almost our configuration that we do once we hit the 1,000 footers on a regular VFR landing. And the rationale for that is that's bringing us down configured, just like I said, like in a downwind. The minute you break out of the clouds, you're already below your last notch of flaps, which are, which are 91. So say you break out, you're really close to the runway. You could up those flaps in, chop the power, and she'll slow right down. Um, the reason we don't like to go slower is, you know, if you're in the clouds, it can be kind of bumpy. Uh, it could put you closer to stall speed if you've got some wind shear or something. So that, that 90 configuration seems to be a, a good compromise on everything. Instruments are in the green. Airspeed's alive. Well, there you go. Remember, slow and steady on those rudder pedals on the takeoff roll. If you get too, yep. too happy, she'll start going all over the place. All right, so you've got your course. So what we need to do, though, is we need to enter our procedure because we're not going to the airport, right, which we have blocked now. All right. So we're, so we're going to do the RNAV for runway 24 initially. So it, we go select approach. It's approach, right. Yep, and then it'd be the RNAV 24. Right hit this and then are we using but we'll go to hackney yep hackney? okay that's our initial approach fix the hackney and our minimums for this one let me pull up now if you want to use the autopilot during this phase of flight that's fine because that can help you out no i never thought about that because i never flew an autopilot plane for instrument before right. so. so go ahead center up your heading bug all right so get it set to you just push yeah the just press okay. it in okay turn autopilot on okay go to heading mode, heading mode. All right, set your altitude to 3,000, so use the knobs use to turn to 3,000. Okay, now see how it says arm? It has not accepted, so hit, so it's already gone to vertical speed, you see VS? So push your up button, oh. tell it to go up like two, 300 feet a minute, and once, oh, it, I see. once it gets up there, it'll lock in. All right, so right now it'll follow its heading bug, which is fine for now. If you want it to follow your course, you would press the nav button. Nav button, right. Right, so you can do that too, nav is fine. Okay. Okay. And also the alter, the uh, altimeter uh, arm went off. All right, so now she's tracking. So now the plane will kind of keep up with this so you can work on the rest. All right, nice. so we were looking up the uh, the minimums for this approach. And we already said the plane does not have WAS, so we can't use an, an LPV, which is a precision approach. Uh, looks like I got some notes in here already. Okay. Sweet. So yeah, no WAS, uh, LP. So we use, we, we go up to... Which minimums? We so the only ones we can use on this plate are L nav. L nav. Okay. We can't use anything with vertical guides in it. So just go all the way to this third column right here. All right, yeah, you're using um, yeah. I'm, I'm using jet plates. You're yeah. using jet. I'm using right. So they're laid out a little bit different. So yeah. So what's our minimums? Uh, twelve twenty. Twelve twenty. All right. So turn yeah. that so it says barrow. Yeah, barrow. There you go. And set twelve twenty. Twelve twenty. And you can go ahead and activate it if you want. Okay, so now what we need to do is plot a course to our initial approach fix. Right. Oh, it's already flashing. Yeah. So if you press direct to. Direct down or enter, right? Enter, enter. That'll put us to and the that'll fix. put us to the new. And if we zoom this out, okay, you can see the way the top of that circle gets into Greensboro's airspace on the hold. So we'll just cut it short of that because we're not talking to them, so we want to stay out of there. Yeah, just stay out of that. Okay. And we do have a switch tanks message real quick, so we'll go ahead and grab that fuel pump is fine. And go ahead and swap tanks. Everything is good. Make sure fuel flow is stabilized here. Fuel pump can go off. off and you can kill your landing taxi lights? Kill landing taxi. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, so this is a, we just said, non-precision approach. So we get down to minimums, how are we going to handle that? Uh, when we get down to minimums... We come down, we're at 1220. We hold, right? And we, we, we stay above the MDA until we hit the, the, the like, runway 24 right here. Uh, if we don't have it made by 24, that's when we that's do. Right. Yeah. So on a non-precision, we're going to hold at the minimum descent altitude until we hit our missed approach point. And then, and then we'll execute the missed approach if we don't see the runway. Now, how does that differ from a precision approach, like an ILS? A precision approach, you would be on the path already. And if you hit minimums and you don't have it made at that point, you instantly go. That's, that's right. Yeah. You, you can't hang out. You there. can't hang you out. You, there's go. no sitting around. You, you're gone. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. So if we take a quick look up here at the top of the, and I'm just going to go off my government chart here. But we can see this block up at the top gives us information about runway length, uh, airport elevation, um, channels for WASP. The block below it gives us information regarding if we have to change any settings based on what we're getting. If we don't get the barrel or something's in op or whatever, that gives us that. To the right, I have the missed approach. So following along, so we get down to our 1220. I say, nope, no runway in sight. What are we going to do? Uh, climb to 3000, direct, woke here, and we're holding. All right, okay. Then the strip below it gives us all of our frequencies that we need to uh, communicate. Pulling down, we have the top-down view. We see our, our hold out here at Hackney. And then coming down, we have a side view, which gives us our elevations. So what is our final approach fix? Uh, final approach fix is... Is, this, is that ICWAM? ICWAM. Yep. Now, this is just a, a follow-up bonus question. If we were flying the LPV, what would our final approach fix be? Keep in mind, LPV is a precision approach. Uh, would that be in Hackney? No, it, oh. would, it would be in altitude. It would oh. be 2,400 feet. Oh, okay. Right. So precision approaches are going to use an altitude, not a geographic location. Right, right. Route. They should happen at the same spot because you're coming down a glide slope, right? Because right? you've got vertical guides. Okay. So that's that. That's why they show both on this plate. So when we're getting into the hold in Hackney. Huh? Are we cutting in like the 45 inward of the hold? Oh, that's a good question. So there's three ways to enter a hold, right? right there's yeah. the teardrop, the parallel, and the direct. So from where we're coming from, how would we enter this hold? Uh, you can see we're at a very acute angle out Yeah, so this, would this be a teardrop? This would be a yeah. teardrop, that's correct. So basically you'll come, you'll cross the, uh, the Hackney, the waypoint, Cut her over to the left, get that outbound leg, and cut her in, and then just cut her short of green throws airspace. I got you. So Hackney, left, grab the outbound leg, and then bring it around short of Greensboro. Correct. Now, if we were over here, say, coming in from this direction, what would we do? Uh, this side? Yes. Uh, that'd be parallel? Parallel, yep. right. So basically, we'd come in and go backwards on the inbound leg, swing yep. it around. And and swing it around. Like a reverse teardrop kind of a, a shape. That's right. All right, and let's get this turn going so we avoid that airspace. Yeah, no airspace violations today. Nope. Not on my to-do list. Oh, a little trick that I do, remember I'm a heading bug guy. If you, use your, if you get your heading bug set when you're on course, and then try to keep your corrections just one side or the other of the heading bug, um, that keeps you from getting too overcorrected, right? Because if you really slam it one way to get back on course, you're probably just going to blow you're just gonna the get, other yeah. side, right? So that, if you if you get off, if you just try to keep it to where you're just on the edge of the heading bug to get back over, unless it's really a big wind or something, um, that'll keep you a little bit steadier. Right, so good, you're one step ahead. You've got your, your next step down in, 2400. We've passed Hackney, we can go ahead and down. And so from here, or we wait to configure it before Iquam. Right, about, about a mile or two before Iquam is when I would start configuring. I just want you configured by the time you get to Iquam. So generally a mile or two is plenty of time to get it. And as bumpy it is, is, is today, if you want to stay like 50 feet above your minimums, that's more than acceptable. Yeah. I, yep. Because you know, on a test you have zero tolerance below and 100 feet above. Yep. So oh, 50 foot puts you in there and it gives you a little buffer, right? If, so you don't go slopping through there, right? So now you know you're at 24. While well, you got a second, you go ahead and set your next step down into your heading bug. Uh, 
you would just go to minimums after this, right? 1220. Uh, no, sir. Or is it, it's the 1580 at C-DAP? Sit down, that's correct, 1580 sit down. And you, you'll notice that the plate, there's a little asterisk next to that 1580. What it says is for LNAV only. Oh, if we were flying LPB or LNAV VNAV, you would be correct. We wouldn't have to worry about sitting. I got gotcha. you. All right, see so up yep, there. You go. So we should already have our landing lights on. Okay. Uh -huh. So you're about a mile out. So we'll get 90 and right. get our fuel pump. And yep, fuel pump is and on. And our first notch. And first notch of flaps. And, and our full prop. And prop is full. And you know our full mixture and fullest tank they're about the same three quarters so yep. basically and now tank. you are configured so when you pop out of the clouds you're ready to roll all right we just broke out of the clouds runway right. in sight all right that was good that's good you did as bumpy as it is you didn't break your altitude your lateral was good let's see if you can give me a nice Nice touchdown. Ashford traffic here, check 323 is roughly 15 miles northeast of the field. We are setting up to join the RNAV GPS from a 21 approach. Ashford. You can see how this works out. You're all configured now already, right? All you got to do is write your, write your speed, and you got one more notch of flaps. You're good. Ashford traffic, Cherokee 51190, left, right, we'll one, two, two, one, Ashford. No brakes. All right. All right, now we can brake. I don't know why she got so wild there. All right, I'm on the brakes too. Let's do a full stop. I heard. She just got kind of bonkers there, and I don't know why. All right, overall, that was good. I don't know what happened to us on that last little bit, but yeah, touchdown was fine. Approach was fine. All right, we get down here, we'll get set up. You want to shoot out the other end and try an ILS? Hey, two miles. Up to see, there's the switch to localizer. Okay. There's a the switch back. Oh, no, you want localizer. Right, yeah. Okay. But you're right, yep. You leveled off, your speed is diving, and you're way above the ISO, yep. Yeah. 